Hi friends and good morning. It is busy. It is early. You guys are crooked. Ah! Okay. You know what? You're just going to have to stay crooked because obviously you're crooked. I'm off centered. It's okay though. We're just going to have to roll with what we have this morning. Um, just a mosquito bite on my finger. All right. So I am going to my first med clinic appointment in months. I don't think I've been here since July, <sighs> June, July. I don't know. Cause she gives me, I want to say it's three months, uh, refills at a time for my Xanax and Prozac, but I skipped. Okay. So two weeks ago I had an appointment that I missed. And that was my only appointment that I've missed. I mean, she has me come back like every three months. I think it's every three months. Like she'll let me decide if I want to go three months or six months, depending on how well she thinks I'm doing. You guys, I'm tired. It's 9.25. I've been up since, I don't remember. I've been up for a long time, a really long time. I'm exhausted. This is the longest light ever, like turn green. Ugh. You guys are probably sick of hearing my turn signal. I'm sick of hearing my turn signal. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I don't know. I haven't done a vlog for a long time involving my mental health. So I was thinking it would be a good time to do it. I'm gonna just text in and driving. Like girl, you're gonna kill us all. I feel like I can just fall asleep. And I don't have time to go to Starbucks because I left too late. I uh, hate going to these appointments by myself, but we have a lot going on today. Two of my three kids have doctor's appointments. My oldest son has therapy. Then tonight we have karate. And I don't know, it's just all super crazy. But, uh,. All right, well, I will see you guys in Peru, and we will see how today goes. We'll see if I get weighed, if I don't get weighed, and we'll see what my med clinic doctor wants to do with me. <laughs> I feel like it's always a surprise. Are you going to hospitalize me? Are you going to give me a medication? Are you going to take a medication away? Like, what are you going to do to me? Um, hold on, right now, I'm trying to not die. So, all right, well, I'll see you guys in Peru. Wow, okay, um, I am going to film this before I head back to Kokomo because I like can't feel my fingers. Um, I <laughs> feel super anxious. Let me turn on my car. I feel like I was gonna pass out. Um, I felt like I was gonna pass out. I feel like I could still pass out. So, <laughs> I kind of feel like I need to let all of this out before, I don't know what the car is doing. This isn't my car, this is my husband's car. So, um. <sighs> I didn't feel like I was breathing when I went in there. That was incredibly, I don't know. Like I just feel incredibly anxious and I should probably deal with this before I get on the road and start driving home especially since I am in my husband's car and I really don't want to crash it. But, um, wow, that was, that was difficult. Um, they weighed me and normally, like I've always, like I said earlier, like normally my husband's here and excuse me. Um, I don't normally have to do this by myself. Uh, and then I think two med clinics ago, so I go every, I was going every eight weeks. They let me go out 12 weeks this time. Um, so it would have been about four months ago. I was in a really bad spot and she almost did an EDO. So I almost wasn't able to come back home. They almost um, hospitalized me. Sorry, I'm like, Wah! I feel like I want to curl up in the fetal position. Um, and so I never know like how my appointments are gonna go whether I'm going to be hospitalized, whether they're going to let me go home. And it was weird coming down here by myself uh, because I didn't, I don't know, I'm just not used to it. And then 
seeing people, I of course had to see the nurse. They weighed me and then after I saw her, I went back out to the, the waiting room and then uh, Wanda came to get me. Um, and then when I was in there, they were like, oh, well you have to see Amanda to fill out some form or something. And I've never had that happen um, that I recall. Normally, I guess Kestrel handles it. So it was just kind of like a check-in thing and she, I don't know, it's just, it's so weird. Um, my brain is all over the place and I feel, I feel incredibly scattered. I don't even know really how to process things right now. I need to calm down. Probably not drink caffeine and there's something on my phone, uh, which I guess I have my camera. I could have vlogged this on my camera. Um, anyway, <laughs> I just feel like I need to be like, <sighs> I don't know. This is weird. Uh, the scale does show that I've lost a couple of pounds on their scale. Um, and then I went back out to the waiting room while well, my blood pressure was like 102 over something, which is, is typically normal. Um, Usually it's much lower than that, but when I'm really anxious, it goes up. And so for me to have this kind of anxiety, uh, 102 over whatever it was, I don't know what it was. I only know the, the top number and I don't even know what they mean. Some people know like what they're called or whatever. And I only know like it's something over something and it's always, you know, I always forget the second number. It was 102 over something. Um, she said it was fine, uh, especially for me being so nervous. Um, so that was that it was weird because there's always a form so when you go to med clinic i guess maybe i maybe i should explain what med clinic is because maybe some people don't deal with med clinic so i see med clinic and basically i have a therapist it's med clinic is a doctor so it's kind of like a psychiatrist and they handle my medications and so i see kestrel and kestrel is my therapist and i see her on a weekly basis so she handles all of my therapeutic services. If I'm inpatient, um, then I'll see the whatever med clinic doctor is there as well as, uh, usually Kestrel's really cool and she'll come in and say hi to me. Um, oh, I got a message. Um, and then, I'm still like holding my breath. Um, so I'll go to my therapist and I'll see her and then I go and I usually have a different appointment to see my med clinic and that kind of changes whether I'm coming to Peru or going to Logan Sport. <clears throat> like I said, like I was going to see um, every eight weeks and then this appointment is gonna be in December so that's gonna be three months out. Um, I don't know what the car is doing. I'm just gonna turn it off because it's like making loud banging noises. So, um, so med clinic manages my medication and I'm only on two meds right now. I've been on many medications and once I was on, I think the most medications I've ever been on at once was like when I was really sick and that was when I had my bad relapse two years ago with anorexia. I was inpatient a lot during that time frame, and, um, I was on, I want to say it was like 13 medications at that moment, uh, but they were, I was really messed up. I was still engaging in self-harm. I was very suicidal. I was very, 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 I want to say sick, but like, that. I, this isn't a sickness. Like, I mean, I struggle with mental illness, which is, I don't know, like, it was just a bad relapse emotionally and mentally and physically. So, um... So you go to med clinic and they kind of like check on, check in with you and ask how you're doing and you fill out this form and it kind of, one side ma manages like your anxiety, the other side manages, I think, depression. And, um, so they have like these different things and you, you have to answer each question and it's like, how have you been with interacting with others or, um, how have you been when it comes to like suicidal thoughts or self-harm and then you kind of rate it like not often often nearly every day half the days um so it's kind of like there's always like a middle and then there's like kind of an extreme and then on either end and then there's kind of like a a less extreme but i don't know so it's kind of like on a like a five point scale um and i'm doing a horrible job explaining this but i'm so anxious <laughs> oh 
Oh my gosh, I like want to go for a run and I don't even like to run. <laughs> so you fill out the form and they kind of rate uh, what your score is to tell whether you're highly anxious, moderately anxious, um, not anxious at all. Uh, and then it's the same for depression. And it was weird because two, I normally am always like on the far extreme side for like, yeah, it really affects my day and it really interrupts my ability to function with others. And I really struggle with this, that, and the other. And when it came to two questions, it was weird. Um, one was a question about my eating uh, cause normally I have issues with appetite. I don't feel appetite. I don't feel, um, I feel either compulsive to overeat or to undereat. Like it's not, there's not much of a balance and it's weird because I woke up today feeling hungry, which is, which is bizarre all by itself because I'm feeling hunger is a new, um, feeling for me. So I woke up feeling hungry well, then when it was, when the question said, or when the question asked, um, do I overeat? Have I had issues with overeating or undereating? Like, how has my appetite been? It was like, oh my gosh, like, I mean, I'm probably undereating and, and, and there's still the desire to like not eat because that's just like, I'm always going to struggle with that because that's just how my mind has been working for the last several years. Um, well, for the majority of my life, but it's just weird because I was able to answer that question and I didn't have an eating issue. Like there wasn't, because they only want like your last two weeks. So for like the last two weeks, my appetite hasn't caused me to under eat or over eat. I've been pretty balanced for me. Um, and balance means I typically eat like one one and a half meals a day so that's unusual and then the other unusual part that I had to answer was um, it asks uh, whether or not I've had any suicidal thoughts or self-harm thoughts or thoughts to hurt someone else and that was another one that I had to answer um, no like not at all which is really weird, you guys. I am diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and self-harm and suicide ideation just kind of come with the territory. And it's just, you know, I'm having a bad day and it's just kind of like, it's not that I want to kill myself. It's just that that thought is just kind of a knee-jerk reaction to, um, sorry, someone came outside and they're smoking and <sighs> distracted me. Oh, I want to take a nap, but I also want to go jogging. Um, so yeah, for me, like I have struggled with self-harm since I was single digits. Like the first time I ever intentionally hurt myself was when I was in first grade. And I remember, I think I was like six and I've always, always struggled with self-harm and it's weird because I've never been able to say that I've not engaged in it and not thought about it. And then the suicide, it's weird. It's, I didn't realize how well I was doing, uh, because I've been struggling with my depression and my anxiety and everything at home. And it's been affecting my ability to function and things, but it's like, so I thought I was going to be doing bad and, sitting down and having to fill out that form and then going to Amanda and having to do that, that survey, that questionnaire, it really helps me see how well I'm doing, how well I'm feeling and how much I'm progressing. It's crazy. So I don't know. I think she saw it too. I just felt like everybody was kind of looking weird at me. Um, the nurse practitioner, she was like, oh, you usually come in here and you have a certain sadness in your eye and, in eyes and you don't have it today. And I was like, I don't feel sad today. I feel anxious. I feel tired. I want to go to bed, but I don't feel sad. I want to get home and I want to eat, which is weird. I want to eat. I don't know. 
it's just nice to do, I guess, an assessment to, to see where you're at and to see how your growth is. I've been working toward progress for years. I've been in eating disorder recovery for two years. And I've been in therapy for many years before that. But like maybe the last year is when I really started getting serious about it. And even though I haven't seen Kestrel for several weeks, I think it's still kind of crazy that I was able to main, not just maintain, but continue to progress on my own. Um, which kind of makes me feel scared because, you know, when you feel sick for so long, it's kind of nerve wracking when all of a sudden you're like healthy because your depression, your anxiety, your you know, anorexia, like whatever it is that you have, like that becomes part of you. That becomes part of your lifestyle, part of your thinking process, part of just your day to day, every, you know, moment, whatever. And to not have that, it's like, there goes your security blanket. No longer are you suicidal. So now you have to deal with life because it's not like you have an out all the time that you're thinking about. So now you have to actually deal with life. You actually have to function. Um, so I don't really know how to process this. Like I'm a little bit bothered about the fact that I no longer have this crutch, this thing to hold on to, this thing about me. And I'm also a little excited because, I mean, I'm a lot excited. I feel good about feeling better. <laughs> so, which is, which is good. It's, it's good. It's taken me two years from my last, you know, big serious downfall. I mean, I've had serious downfalls since then, but my last intense, you know, relapse, it's taken me two years of consistently working. And I honestly have never thought that this day would come. And then to have somebody tell me I don't look sad, to have somebody tell me that um, I'm doing better, I'm looking better, that I'm not, I don't need hospitalized. Wow. It kind of makes me feel like they're going to ditch me. Like, oh, you're not sick anymore. You got to go. I just don't really know how to feel. I mean, I, I, I think I should feel good. I think I should feel happy. Um, but I just, I really don't know how to fully feel. I'm just kind of in shock. Like it needs to sink in that I don't feel half dead for once, that I don't feel like I want the, the world to disappear. I feel alive. I feel like I'm participating in my life and I don't feel like I want to stop. And that's just a weird way for me to be. So yeah, sorry about my rambling. I will bring you guys with me tomorrow to therapy. I thought this was going to be a normal check-in and normal appointment and I was just going to be like a whole bunch of the same old stuff about, oh, I have anorexia and oh, I have depression and oh, anxiety and um, life is hard and life sucks and boo-hoo-hoo tears. I thought I was going to have another vlog like that. I didn't think that I was going to have a vlog where I'm like, guess what, you guys? I'm getting better. I'm doing well. I'm healthy and I'm progressing and you can too. I didn't think that this was going to be that kind of vlog. So I'm really excited. I'm excited to edit this and post this and, and I hope, you know, I hope this is not just a temporary thing. I hope it's permanent, especially since I've not been on Xanax, especially since I've not been sleeping, especially since my anxiety and depression are just as present as they have been. It's weird that like things can improve without other things improving. So it's weird to have a quality, like to feel like I have quality of life or whatever. All right. Well, I will see you guys tomorrow and we will go deal with therapy. And I can't wait to find out what Kestrel has to say. Um, I think she's going to be pleasantly surprised by the fact that her client doesn't want to jump off a bridge. Um, actually, that's not how I would do it. I did. I don't want to do anything that's painful. I'm a, I'm a weenie. Anyway, all right, well, I will see you guys tomorrow. So, yeah, thanks for hanging with me today. Hey, you guys. All right, so um, as I said earlier, I had gone to med clinic, and then I said that the next day I was going to go to therapy, and 
and then I was going to post uh, just kind of an update after therapy. However, let me like try to fix this without knocking you guys off of my, got it, I think, I think. Anyway, okay, so yeah, I was going to go to therapy and I was gonna post an update from therapy. However, I did not go to therapy. Uh, yeah, I skipped it because I'm a chicken, I'm a coward, I'm a loser, like whatever you wanna fill in as an adjective. Uh, so this is just my outro for that. Um, I have an appointment next week to go to therapy and I will post an update then. In the meantime, all you guys get is just my update. Ah, I'm blinded. Is just my update for med clinic, which I still think is a really good thing. I just need to get my butt into being consistent and do what I need to do. So yeah, that's my update for now and I will see you guys later. So have a great weekend, week, weekday, year, month, decade, century. I don't know. Bye.